a waste basket of letters for my father's surgeon. Can you make me a new body, one with the chest unwound and painless? Of all the folks I know, you know best the work of undoing a life slowly and in parts. Do you feel the storm living at your operating table and the length of your scalpel? If you can kill by accident so easily, if you were actually trying, what could you do? Two, I blink awake to your pool, the unravel you're at my bedside, wrapping my intestines around and around your arm, a spool. I open my mouth to scream and silence comes out. My feet are flying and digging and scraping into concrete and dirt in every doorway, but trailing behind me endless are my intestines, a bulging, pulsing noodle still spilling from my split torso. I ask my legs to carry me into the sky, out of sight. At first, I am a bird gone and gone until my body has been running for so long that time has stopped and died, but I can still feel you reeling me in. I wake up in bed, hollow. You were not a dream, and I am still a daughter. How can I be empty and still so precious? Three. My mom is sobbing when I say I'm leaving the hospital to attend a rally for Mike Brown. Her voice is a ringing bark. She tells me through a face of water, our family has no right to anger or suffering. From his hospital bed, my dad is scrunched faced and asking only for silence. Grief paints the whole room, so she yanks down the blinds, and on either side of that window, it doesn't change the truth that a black boy is dead again. We hear the verdict in the quiet of white mouths, and again the rally comes, and again we wake and march and scream and chant because the truth is not optional. This truth in this body cannot be siphoned from the loudness of long-lived violence. The truth of an unwritten story, the truth of eternal love is necessary, and black and brown and black and brown and black and brown and black and brown in my breath. The fumes, they rise, the smoke, we rise. Woo!